Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tico Tuned In. We're excited today. We have some really uh, cool um, and very timely guests with us. But for those of you who are just tuning in to us, this is a, a format that we kicked off, oh, right when COVID hit, you know, and in, in the need to help keep people informed that, you know, things are still happening in the city and how are people readjusting and moving forward. And it's been very beneficial. We've had a lot of fun and we hope that we've been able to keep you all informed as well along the way. So uh, with that, um, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. We have two, uh, once again, two incredible guests with us today. We have David Lopez. He is the owner and uh, chief everything at Manny's uh, Restaurant KC. And he's also the incoming chairman of the Kansas City Restaurant Association. So he's wearing a couple hats. And then we have Alan Carr, who is uh, the executive, chief executive with Visit Kansas City, Kansas. And it's the Convention and Visitors Bureau, if you will, on the Kansas side. And we felt like they would be a great compliment to talk about all things food and uh, tourism related um, for, the, for the foreseeable future. So with that, we're going to go ahead and, and kick it off, and I'm going to uh, start with uh, Ma um, David Lopez. Did I call you Manny earlier? That's okay. <laughs> that That's out. okay. That's my middle name. <laughs> Miss him every oh, day. Yeah. It's I, all good. I knew, I knew your dad so so well. Yes, and, you did. Um, we were really good friends, and he was a big uh, champion mentor of mine. So That's awesome. That's very kind of you. So I'm telling you that, that um, he meant a lot to me and to a lot of people in this community. He did a lot of great things. He was a first for many, many, um, in many regards. And I, I specifically with Visit KC, he was like the first Latino to serve on the board of Visit Kansas City or the Kansas City Convention Visitors Bureau. And then I followed and then you followed shortly. So he, he laid the groundwork um, and he's a, was um, amazing shoulders to stand on to help us get the work done, not to mention all the work with the Hispanic Chamber and all the other things that you've been able to pick up too in your life, especially now as you're leading um, Manny's KC. So David, let's get started with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are now? Uh, well, you said so much right there. And um, it's a situation with my father that, um, you know, everyone always talks and says wonderful things about my father like you just did. And I greatly appreciate that. But for me, he was my best friend. He was my my amigo and like he used to always say my compadre and we did everything together as much as we could and you know how i got to where i am today my father was very big on me doing what i wanted to do with my own life not not necessarily connected to the restaurant but connected to what it was that i felt in my heart what i felt passionate about to use my mind and to my energy and my faith and um you know for me i went to benedictine college i graduated in 2001 I had a wonderful experience there, not only in education, but I played football there as well, sang in the choir, met my beautiful wife, uh, Emily Lopez, who we've been married for 20 years, uh, we dated for 25, we have five beautiful children. Um, my life really kind of sparked and began really at Benedictine in a sense of, I want to say adulting and really understanding what it is that I was going to do. and. I kind of slipped into the restaurant business and, uh, and I, and I know that sounds kind of funny, but, um, I don't know if I ever really planned to doing this, uh, to be very honest with you. I, I had other things in mind, other goals, but at the same time, um, I absolutely fell in love with the industry. I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with the care and the love that my father gave to Kansas city, as well as my mother and my sisters and to see the joy that they kind of, received and gave every single day was something that really just kind of attached to my heart. Uh, my father just didn't hand the keys and go, okay, here you go. Good luck. You know, I had to bust tables, wash dishes. I mean, you name it, everything in that restaurant, I, I did it. And I did it for a very, uh, you know, healthy length of time. Um, I was the executive chef there for 10 years and I learned from Rafa Guzman who's been with our family for almost 25 years. He started with us when he was 16. Um, he showed me how to make everything that my grandma made, that my grandpa made, that my Aunt Mary Lou made, that my mother made. Um, and it's something that is really at the core of our success is that consistent quality in love, care, and really the awareness of not, uh, not being too greedy in a sense of wanting to change everything, but realizing what people need and want, especially with what we're going through right now. 
it's just consistency and comfort. And we're able to do that at 207 Southwest Boulevard. I've been the general manager for about six years. Um, I sit on the Visit KC Board of Directors. I'll be the president of the Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association. Um, and my most proudest role is that I am the father of five beautiful children and the husband of Emily Lopez, who is the, uh, uh, is, she's a director of adult uh, evangelization at the Kansas Archdiocese. And uh, I'm very, very blessed. I'm a very blessed and fortunate man. And um, the road that I've taken maybe not be very conventional, but it's something that I'm very, very proud of. Every step I took was with purpose and with reason. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I also, like my father would always tell me, I never turned those mistakes into failure because I learned from them and I did the best I could to make myself who I am today. And without my sisters, without my mother, my father, my wife, my children, um, I, I am not who I am today. So I owe a lot of people um, my success and, I, and I'm very grateful and appreciative of it. Excellent. Great, great story. Um, so let's, let's turn to Alan. Alan, the same question. So I know you work for Visit KC. That's where we met. And now you're leading uh, the Kansas City, Kansas um, Convention and Visitors Association. So let's start with you. How did you get your start and how did you end up where you're at now? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a small town Kansas boy. I, I grew up in South Central Kansas in a little town of about 2,000 people. And uh, Went, went to college up at KU and uh, essentially never left uh, the area up here. So I, I spent most of my uh, last 20 years on the Missouri side uh, and, and have always worked in tourism. I, I actually worked for a small airline, Vanguard Airlines, if anyone remembers that, that was based out of Kansas City. That was sort of my first, my first real job and it was with them until they went out of business actually, which was a great lesson in crisis uh, communications actually. Uh, and, and from there I've, I've worked at uh, tourism jobs. I, I was with um, an agency where we did uh, uh, tourism work for the state of Missouri, uh, Missouri tourism, and then ended up at Visit KC where I, where I was for, for most of my career. Um, I'm, I'm excited to return back to my Kansas roots over here at Visit Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, you know, I, I think that this is a place that, uh, that, that has a story that a lot of people don't know, so I, I'm excited to share that. Um, uh, but I, I, I love I love tourism. I love marketing. I love Kansas City. You know, I, I think there's just so much uh, great things to do here, and and I love the opportunity to showcase the place you live and get people excited about about where you live and get people excited to to come out and, uh, and you know and experience the place the the way that we know it. Um, you know, I don't. I, I will say I don't know Kansas City, Kansas as well as I know other parts of the of, of the area. I know uh, a, a lot of the the major attractions. I I just started here about a year ago, and so I've been getting to know the area like a resident does, and and I, it's been really exciting. I, I'm actually am a new resident. I, I just bought a house over here in Strawberry Hill, uh, and just moved uh, over here over Thanksgiving. So so I'm excited to get out and you know see what what the neighborhood's about especially you know once we get past covid when we're able to to get out and gather and join and do things a little more more normally the hill that's awesome man yeah it, it's it's a great it's a great little place to be it's a great little place to be for sure we're neighbors now too so we're so happy to have you on the hill in the Kansas yeah. side and cc and i are both original dots so it's yep. big place in our hearts. Original yeah. dot. My mom still, my family still lives over there. So I, I love getting over, I love getting over to the Kansas side. Yeah. And um, well, let's just move right into the next question. So uh, Alan, I'm going to pitch it back to you. So what has been the most surprising or unintended consequence of the pandemic? Yeah, well, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, tourism is one of those industries that has just been hit extremely hard. Uh, you know, when you can't travel, uh, when you've when you've got to you know isolate and, and and not be in groups, that that affects all aspects of the tourism business. And you know, hotels, uh, restaurants, attractions, and and it's just been it's been so challenging. I think for those businesses, and, and we really see it from two fronts. You know, there's the economic front from the business suffering, um, and 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 how that affects and has so much ripple down. But there's also the, those frontline workers and those, those folks that work in restaurants, those folks that work in hotels, 
Um, and, and in Kansas City, Kansas, I think we've we've been hit especially hard from that standpoint because we have a higher percentage of those workers than I think a lot of other parts of the metro area. So I know a lot of our citizens over here have lost their jobs and 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 that's been really challenging. But at the same time, you know, we've we've really had to pivot. I think that's been the word of the year, I think. Uh, what what we're doing, because we're usually trying to get people from out of town to come in, and now we're really, we've been talking to locals and, and trying to get locals to make sure that they're going out and supporting these businesses and especially restaurants uh, that are still open and trying to make it um, that are that are having to do things differently. And we want to make sure that, you know, as many as many folks can survive uh, till we can get through the end of this as possible. All right. David, same question. Oh, um, this has probably been, and I'm sure that we all can, everyone that's listening to this and everyone that's on this, you know, this uh, Zoom, it's just been so difficult, you know, and I, I always try to find as much positive as I can. And it's very difficult in times right now, especially at the very beginning of this, when I've got to tell, you know, 80 of my employees, hey, I, I you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to lay off. And these people are my family. You know, they've been working for my, my family, the Lopez family for 10, 15, 20 years. They have children, they have, they have apartments, they have mortgages, they have car payments, you know, they have all these different things that we all sometimes maybe take for granted a little bit as we kind of push through this. And for that type of worry and stress it, that, that to know that I can't take care of the people that allow the Lopez family to serve this wonderful community for over 40 years um, it, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking. It's just very tragic. Um, with, with how we've moved, with how we've shaped things, you know, unfortunately you just have to find a way you have to find a road and it's just not easy to find a path right now. What's, what's been surprising to me is the, un, I, sh, I, I shouldn't be surprised by this because I always say this and I believe in this, but the amazing support and the love that the citizens of Kansas City have shared with our family, uh, coming in through our doors and saying, I want $1,000 in gift cards. I want $13, $50 gift cards. I want this, I want that, I wanna do this, I wanna help here, here's this, here's that. All these different types of things have not only happened at Nanny's restaurant, but have happened throughout our community. You know, I always tell people this all the time, you know, it's, it's not the Chiefs, it's not the Royals. It's not sporting. It's not the college basketball scene. It is the people of Kansas City that make this one of the greatest places to live in this metro area with Kansas City, Kansas, with KC Mo, with Johnson County, with Overland Park, all these communities that we have attached together. And the difficulties have been a lot easier because we know that um, the support we're going to get from our community um, it, it's just going to be second to none. So it's, it's so much easier to handle these things together. Um, as the community, as a city, um, our industry has just been, you know, been kicked in the teeth. I mean, that's just the only way to say it. I mean, it's been hurt. It's hurt a lot of people. And unfortunately, after we get through these holidays, there's going to be a lot of people's favorite restaurants and favorite bars and, and grills and all these wonderful places they're just not going to be able to make it. You know, we've got some great news today. The federal government's got that stimulus package coming out. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we get some details on that very, very soon. Um, unfortunately for our industry, it, it's, it's most likely six months too late, if not 10 months too late or however long this pandemic has been occurring. Um, a little disappointed on a federal level of what our government could have done for our small businesses, mm -hmm. which are the backbone to our community, but we're going to find a way, you know, it's being hopeful. Um, it's, it's sharing that hope with other people in our community, within our restaurant industry. It's doing all we can to help each other because that's what we need to do right now. And so, um, like I said, positivity is the only way that I can kind of get through this. And I think the love and the care and the friendship that we've all seen throughout this whole ordeal, um, it's, it's, it's been so beautiful. So it's been nice. Lydia? One taco at a time, right? One at a time. Taco at a time. I get a nice little laugh out of that every time I tell my customers that. But I also, it, it's, it's also a good way to connect with people. You know, we have a little laugh and then we say that and then they, they get it because they're doing whatever their one thing at a time is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's all we can do right now. Yeah. 
and and to your both of your points that food is such a comfort and travel is such a part of our natural you know instinct as as families as people as community so during this time how have you and others shifted to stay afloat and this is also um you know you talked about gift certificates and alan i know there's a huge initiative on the kansas side as well for what else but tacos so um tell us a little bit about that silver lining and and anything that has kind of come out of this especially during this time right now the big thing we've been working on throughout the year uh, is is our new kck taco trail and there's a couple motivations behind this you know I, I think the first thing is we're wanting to really better tell the story of who kansas city kansas is as a place and as we've really looked at that that's really all about the neighborhoods it's all about these different groups that have settled here and have this unique history and created these unique spaces and really brought these unique food traditions um, in, into Kansas City, Kansas. And so we thought what better way to launch this initiative promoting our neighborhoods than promote the great uh, taco heritage that we have over here in Kansas City, Kansas and this great Latino culture that we have over here. So we've been working on actually most of the year, believe it or not, we've been working on this trail um, and, and we're working on it, concepting it pre-pandemic, but we, once we saw what was happening with the restaurants, we knew that this was something that could could hopefully offer a little bit of a support to our restaurants over here. Because I think the thing that's really interesting that I've discovered about a, a lot of these restaurants is these are really small businesses. You know, these are a lot of mom and pop places. Um, these are a lot of immigrant owned businesses. And so the opportunity to kind of tell those stories and support these these businesses in some some way has has been has been really exciting. So we launched this trail in in October. Uh, believe it or not, we have 50 restaurants that we've identified, a little more than 50 actually, uh, that serve tacos. And so you know a lot of these are those um, traditional taquerias, you know, serving street tacos. We've got some Tex-Mex places, and we've got some also some interesting places that aren't necessarily taco places, but they may have some sort of taco specialty on the menu. So we've created this program. People can go and download, download our online, uh, online pass, uh, check in when they go to these restaurants and uh, earn prizes basically for eating tacos. So, so who doesn't love that, right? And, and we've had great success. Uh, we've already had almost 5,000 people download our pass. Uh, we've tracked um, about 3,800 visits to these restaurants over here. And so we're, we're, we're doing a little, a little part we feel like in helping drive some people in the doors and, you know, giving some business to, to these restaurants in a time when they really need it. And uh, there's so many, there's so many, but we have one right here in the house um, on the Missouri side, but still, David, um, thoughts about that question or also just, it's Christmas week. So um, thoughts about this week too, you know, in, in Manny. You know what we're doing. Um, I, I just, I love, I love the Taco Trail. I, I really do. I love it. I think it's a great idea. Um, visit KC. You know, with kind of their interaction and how they do their marketing is, it's just so brilliant on the Missouri side, and I know on the Kansas side with Alan, uh, just going to do a great job there. Uh, it, it's, it's. You see the barbecue trail now. You see the Taco Trail, and there's, it's, it's. There's such a beauty in it too. There's such a, there's such a passion and a love and just so much soul. It's just kind of woven into to those beautiful small little restaurants that that have the same people show up every day, get up, do what they do, do it extremely well, and they put their hearts into their food, into their product, into their environment. And it's something especially that our, our Latino culture really embraces and really, really, that's what defines us. That's what makes us unique. We all have things um, culturally that we do, that we share with this world that makes this world such a beautiful place, especially you know, in America and to have something like that be so readily available for maybe folks that couldn't afford to do something like that. It's such a wonderful gift. And especially right now, uh, you know, on the, on the Missouri side, you know, we are the home of the crispy taco, the Kansas city taco, something that we're extremely proud of. Um, you know, we've gotten so much push off of that and it's been really, really great. And I think with what we're looking at with restaurant week, with what visit KC is trying to do on the Missouri side, um, you know, as a Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association with our partnership with Visit KC, 
Um, I sit on both those boards, Jason Volvi, myself, Bill Teal. We had a wonderful idea. Um, hey, let's give the restaurants, let's give them free entry into restaurant week. Because how many folks right now can say, okay, I need to pay these dues or do this or do that right now. So it was such a wonderful gift thought by a thought up by Jason Bowlby and it was such a caring and kind gesture. And we're going to focus on carry out. We're going to focus on curbside. We're going to get you meals that you can come call, pick up. If you want to, if you're comfortable coming in through our restaurant, come on down. We're going to take care of you. We're going to get six feet of space. We're going to do what we need to do. Um, I'm very proud of what our industry has done on both sides of the state line, as far as keeping people safe. This is our community. The people that walk through our doors are how we make our living and we're blessed to do so. So we are going to be very responsible in taking care of folks, but they're really going to be a big time emphasis on, on curbside, on carry out on different things like that. And I think that's going to be a really wonderful thing. I feel like the trend that's occurring and, and Alan, maybe you're seeing a little bit of this too, but I feel like with this holiday week and, and kind of moving a little bit forward, it feels like families are saying, I'm, I'm tired of cooking. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. It's been a heck of a year. Let's let Manny's take care of us. Uh, let's let all these different other restaurants take care of us. We're going to go pick it up. We're going to enjoy our, our family within our home and be smart and safe. And I feel like that's going to be something that's going to really be nice as we kind of move forward this weekend and into the holiday season. Yeah, thank you for that. And for the quick preview of, uh, of Restaurant Week, I know CC. oh, kitty. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a few. <laughs> I, I also love the shift of, you know, as much as we love eating out, we've started taking out two, three times a week and yeah. feel good about it because you're actually supporting. It's not, um, you know, it's an indulgence, but it's also shooting it directly back to um, to the community. That we well, it's so out. important right now. I mean, it just it yeah. just is. People just need something that they can remember from what it used to be like 10 months ago, 11 months ago. Yeah. Joy is something that, you know, we're, we cry, as human beings, we cry about the same thing over and over and over again, you know, but we never laugh about the same thing more than once. And in times like this with joy, so needed, it, I got to go, I got to go to Jack Stacks. I got to get those baby back ribs. I got to do this. I got to get that. I got to go to Capitol grill and get the lobster mac and cheese. I got to go to town topic and get the truck to stop. I got to go to Manny's and get the El Sombrero. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> It, because it makes you feel good mm -hmm. and you, you can't take you can't take, can't take that for granted right now you just mm -hmm. can't no um so i the, go, i'm gonna go ahead and lead us into restaurant week then so um david let's start with you i mean as chair of the uh incoming chairman of the restaurant association and on the visit kc board you're kind of wearing a dual hat there and well triple hat because you're a restaurateur <laughs> so uh tell us about restaurant week I think it's going to be something that, uh, you know, obviously the history of restaurant week is such a beautiful thing. It's a collaboration between our restaurants, between visit KC. It's, it's just been, it's been kind of crafted and shaped and, and it just gets better and better and better every year. You know, we were shooting for, you know, 150 restaurants to right. sign up for restaurant week. Mm -hmm. We already had that. And then some, so that's right. exciting. And like we talked about earlier, uh, Jason Bowlby and, and the, the restaurant week committee made up of Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association directors and Visit KC, you know, they came up with this fantastic idea of saying, okay, you know what, let's help our restaurants. Let's waive the fee, let's get everybody on, let's get your menus in by December uh, 22nd. And so the platform that, that Visit KC has, especially digitally, is something that's going to really boost our industry in a sense of, you know, one touch access is so important right now as far as carry outs and curbside you know, we've all had to kind of adjust how we do business right now during this pandemic. And we had to get very creative very, very quickly. I've got family meals for four to eight people. I've got family meals from 10 to 12. I've got different type of casserole meals, taco meals. Our restaurant week's going to be available uh, uh, with through our chow now, through pickup, through different things like that. And that's just not at Manny's. That's for every single restaurant throughout the Kansas City, Missouri uh, metro area on both sides of the state line. So it's getting creative in a sense of trying to be as, as accessible and as safe with that accessibility as you can be to try to serve the community that we all love and care for. So I think it's going to have a different twist to it of, I mean, duh, right? I mean, obviously, you know, with what's going on and with the restrictions, but I think this could be 
one of the finer moments in the in the history of restaurant week in a sense of the creativity the care the um the want and the need to uh take advantage of our partnership in a sense of really helping an industry that has just been so thoroughly damaged so um I i'm really looking forward to seeing how this rolls out and then you know don bosco center i mean does it get any better than that for Kansas City? I mean, Don Bosco is such a beautiful, wonderful, helpful, caring, multicultural, just amazing place. And you're going to do some serious, serious good for a charity and an organization that has been in this city forever and has helped countless people and families do what they need to do. So it's just a win-win for everybody, and especially when we need to just like feel good like we've been talking about. Absolutely. Alan, tell us how your, how the, um, how your restaurants and other tourism related, uh, industry, uh, entities rather are going to, I mean, what, what did they, how are they gearing up for restaurant week? Yeah. You know, the, the thing I love about restaurant week is, is it really is a Metro wide initiative. And so we've got restaurants over here participating. I know we've got, you've got restaurants in Johnson County, you know, mm -hmm. really if wherever you are in the Metro, you can get involved in restaurant week. And, you know, we haven't had as many traditionally as many of our restaurants over here participate. So I know that's something we're working with the restaurant association mm -hmm. um, to, to, to get, to get more of our Kansas City, Kansas restaurants involved. Uh, but it's just it's a, it's such a great opportunity, as David said, to um, get people excited about dining out. And, you know, I, I think that's the motivation, you know, and similar to the taco trail we've created. It's kind of taking uh, all of these small businesses and making them bigger and giving people this real concentrated reason to go out. And, and, and I do think that there is, you know, uh, hopefully this year it's going to be better than ever because there's such motivation um, for people to support restaurants. So you not only can you go out and, and, and have a great meal, but you're, you're supporting a couple of great causes. And so I, I, I think I'm, I'm really excited to see sort of how, how, how this comes together and, and really get, you know, get more people out there to, to dine out, uh, you know, at a time when, when maybe not, not as many people are leaving their house. Um, so Alan, I have to ask this cause I, you know, I'm a dot just like Lydia. What's your favorite place? What are a couple of your pl favorite places over in Strawberry Hill? Just curious. Yeah, yeah you know, so so I always say I try to avoid favorites, uh, you know, as, as, as the tourism guy, but I, yeah, I have, right, I've, right, been, right. I've been working really hard there to get out and especially around tacos. Yeah. Um, I've been to probably about 20 taco places over wow. here yeah. and have discovered some things that I, I really had no idea of. Um, I'll just mention, you know, El Camino Real yeah, um, they, they talk about they're one of the kind of original places over here in Kansas City, Kansas, you know, that brought mm -hmm. that tradition from Mexico City. They have this, um, I think it's a chuleta taco. Is that, is that right? Am I saying that right? Uh, which is amazing. It's basically like chopped up pork chops in a taco. And oh, uh, oh I <laughs> love, 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 love. The other one I've discovered is, um, I think it's called Campechanos. Um, and it's a, 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 a Tacos El Guero um, on, on Minnesota. And it is also just this kind of crispy and soft meat, you know, beef filling um, that is just amazing. Wow. And uh, David, I'm going to ask you one question. So, uh, you know, ne next week people are getting ready for the new year and obviously pretty anxious to put 2020 behind them and welcome 2021. So, uh, what, what, uh, what cocktail, do you have a signature cocktail or what, what kind of cocktail do you recommend at Manny's? I mean, uh, how do you, kind of festage, festive, how, do you, how do you go wrong with, you know, the OG? I mean, the Manny, the Manny's margarita. I mean, I yeah. just, you know, I mean, we have, we have the De Oro, we have the Cadillac, we have the Fresco, we have wonderful different things for people's oh, the Cadillac, palates yeah. and tastes and they're just so delicious, but. I mean, geez, Louise, the Manny's Margarita, it's how my father made it at Westport One. It's how he's made it for his entire life. And it's something that is so traditional for us. I mean, people just come in there and especially right now, you know, and, and safely and carefully and they get those pictures of Manny's Margaritas and it's just, it's awesome to see that joy on their face. It's fun. Excellent. Very cool. Well, I'm gonna have to pop in between now. And you know where I'm. You know where I'm at, Cz. You know I mean, at. you know where I'm at. Know you know, I'm at. there. You know where I'm gonna be. Lydia, 
I'm hungry and thirsty. There you go. <laughs> it's, um, so one thing that you know we'd love to direct our viewers to is how do they how do they find out or figure out uh, Restaurant Week, the Taco Trail? Um, where can they go? So Visit KC is just totally set up. You've got the Restaurant Week app that you can actually download on your phone, and it just connects you with everything that you could possibly imagine. That's why we have to have those menus turned in by December 22nd, because you're going to be able to get on your phone, boom, find your menus, find the deals, what you need to do, where you need to go, make a reservation, get on Uber Eats, get on Grubhub, get on Chow Now. It's all going to be your conduit to directly connect you to Restaurant Week. And that app is something that we have really been focusing on. I think, you know, Alan, even when you were, when we were in the mix there as well, uh, it's something that has just been building and building and building. I, I believe that there are no mistakes in this life. I think that things happen for a reason. And what a better year and a more of a desperate need to need that application and that app in case you restaurant week than it is right now. I mean, it is literally a one-stop shop for whatever, whenever, however you want to do it. Uh, that app is going to be your go-to and you can get that at visitkc.com and it's going to connect you through everything. And, uh, you know, and also you can look on, you know, Look on my website, look on your favorite restaurant website. We have so many participants. Um, I'm going to be shocked if you're not going to find your favorite place, throw in a restaurant week deal uh, together, and uh, it's going to be amazing. But that restaurant week app is awesome. It is so cool. Excellent. Nice. Yeah, and then, you know, before uh, restaurant week or after restaurant week, uh, tech, check out the taco trail, the KCK taco trail. Yes, yes. Go to kckatacotrail.com, <laughs> and you can get signed up for the pass. Um, and, and shoot, I don't, I don't know, if, I haven't looked at the list, but if there's some uh, places that are participating in restaurant week, then you can score both and earn some, earn some prizes for, from the taco trail uh, and uh, support restaurant week at the same time. And that's, gotta eat. that's the beauty about, I think this year, especially with us waiving the fee uh, of, of being involved with restaurant week, we're getting restaurants that we've never gotten before. Right. You know, 18th and Vine, KCK, you know, maybe some place outside in Overland Park that maybe really never looked at it. You know, we're we're getting ready to touch a lot of communities here, and we're also going to use that connectivity to connect those restaurants, those this, even the, the smallest of the small, the biggest of the big. However, we're also going to use them to get involved under our umbrella with the Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association, so that they are informed, so they know that today is a big day because we've got another round of stimulus uh, coming through with the federal government, and we can help them with hours of closure. And we could do what we need to do and update them on what each county is doing and how they're handling and the restrictions. It's really, really difficult to, to face that on your own. And the Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association is there. That My father loved the Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association. It was so, so important to him because it was the lifeblood of our industry that connected everyone together, whether you sold steaks, whether you sold tacos, whether you sold breakfast, it didn't matter. We all have these same issues and same problems that we need representation for. And sometimes there are people out there that just don't feel like they have that representation. Well, we at the Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association are going to give it to you. And we've got a wonderful, diverse, culturally fantastic board and a slate of officers that I am so, so, so proud of. So, um, it, I, like I said, positive, 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 right? And we're looking forward to having that connectivity with some of those small restaurants that Alan represents. And, and new faces and new folks that really need help. So we're looking forward to that. Excellent. Well, we have a lot to look forward to. I'm really excited about, you know, really hopefully getting through a, a I, what I hope will be a really uh, good revenue opportunity for Kansas City restaurants here before the end of the year. And then of course, looking forward to, but you know, the, uh, the other side of this pandemic and um, hopefully back, you know, back to whatever the new normal will look like for tourism, especially for tourism. And then of course, for our restaurants that benefit for, from tourism. Um, I have one bonus question and I'm gonna start with Alan on this. Alan, what would you do if you were not afraid? Hmm. You know, uh, it's really interesting. Um, from just a philosophical standpoint, you know, I think the fear uh, and especially fear of change is something that holds so many people back. Um, we, we get in our routine, we do the things that we're comfortable with, 
And, and I think that all goes back to fear. And I think it is sometimes, sometimes we're pushed <laughs> into new directions uh, where, you know, something else overcomes that fear for us. So um, I, I, I think trying new things is, is both big and small is, is the biggest thing that I would want to do more of. Excellent. And what about you, David? I, this is going to sound a little bit arrogant and I'm so, so sorry. And CC, you're probably going to, this is going to probably sound like a man that you knew for a very long time. <laughs> I just, you know, I, there's not a lot of regret for me. And it's because I think it's because like my father, my mother taught me jump through the window when it opens, go through the door, take a shot, take a chance. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. You know, uh, yeah, you play football, but get up on stage and be Tony at West Side Story. Those are the things in the moments of my life that I loved and I treasured and I cherish. And I try to give that to my children and so that they're well-rounded. You know, I, like, uh, my, like my son who I was talking about earlier, he hated doing piano lessons when he was younger, all the way through eighth grade. And once they get into high school, I say, okay, you want to do piano more? You don't want to do piano anymore. That's fine. What does he do every time he comes home? from school or he has a free moment he gets on the piano and it's things like that it's it's having that mindset at an early age that that we are all fortunate enough to have wonderful people whether it have been our family whether it have been mentors coaches teachers people we worked for we've all had a beautiful view of what their success looks like we don't want to make other people's success our success we want to find our own success that's something that's extremely important and i I don't know. I, 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 I listen to that question and I think it's, it's a wonderfully beautiful question that could have so many wonderfully delicate, you know, poetic answers. But for me, I just, I, I am very content with my life. Um, I've got a beautiful wife. I've got children. I've got a great business that my father said, you know, here you go, you and your sisters go do the best you can. And I'm, I'm taking care of my family and my community. And um, I'm, you know, yeah, I lost my hair, but no, that's a small price to pay. That's why God gave me this round head. It's perfect. <laughs> well, guys, it's been a, a really just a, a fun time talking with you and learning more about what, you, what you're each doing um, to better our city, to better the lives of all the service workers, the people that support these industries, hospitality, restaurant industry. Um, you know, we, have a, we do have a lot to look forward to, a lot to be positive about. I think we're in good hands in these regards in this regard so i think and um, with that uh lydia do you have anything left to add food is where the heart is thanks for representing it and sharing with us today and happy holidays merry christmas everybody thank you for happy having holidays me. everyone happy see holidays. you at the end of next year